Hey guys, I don't normally do this, but I feel the need to do it for this episode. Um, in this episode, I make reference to rape in the context of a character in a in the show be having uh, implied to have been raped, and I under and I don't and I'm doing this because I don't want someone to get to that part in the episode and are suddenly turned off from my videos because of it. Uh, I don't want to offend anyone. I kind of just... I, I make reference to it because it's important to make reference to it in this specific case. And I try not to do stuff like that. Uh, probably in my earlier days, I probably would have do would have made reference to it and I wouldn't have done this. But I've got, I'm older and more mature and I understand that this is a sensitive subject and that some people are very uncomfortable by this. And I under, and I understand that they're uncomfortable and I want to show that I'm not just going to make people uncomfortable for no reason. So, if the subject of rape is a sensitive subject for you, I do not expect you to watch this episode if you don't want to. You could watch up to that part, uh, you know, if you'd like, but, you know, if you want to turn it off at that, I wouldn't blame you. Anyway, I'm rambling longer than I expected. Let's get to the episode. Roll theme song. Welcome to How to Fix It. Previously on this show, we've only looked at films and television shows as a whole, and not individual episodes. Today, that's going to change. The third episode of this series was on Sliders. It was a toss-up on whether it had been the first or the third, but Mystery Science Theater the movie ultimately won out. I said during the Sliders episode that I would look at individual episodes of it that were especially bad. And I'm finally following through on that. And well, here we are. If you have never seen Sliders, go watch my video on it, because if you don't, then this won't make much sense. Anyway, Sliders had a problematic few seasons after the creator, Tracy Torme, left the show. Actors left, and by the time the fifth season rolled around, the show was on its last legs. A big part of the fourth season had been finding Wade, Quinn's love interest and one of the original Sliders, who had been sent to a Cro-Mag breeding camp when the actress, Sabrina Lloyd, walked out after season three ended. Her character never got closure, so in season five, they decided to bring the closure that the character so desperately needed. And they fucked it up. Not that I expected anything less from them. So... Let's not waste any time. This is Requiem. Just a note, this is a season 5 episode, and so the cast is Rembrandt, Maggie, Diana, and Mallory. The episode starts with Rembrandt getting a migraine and seeing hallucinations of Wade. Rembrandt remembers what happened when she got sent to the breeding camp. She was screaming to him for help, but by that point, the Cro-Mags had screwed with his brain enough that he thought it was them trying to trick him. He sees what he thinks is a portal, but none of the other sliders can see it, so they just assume he's nuts. After they slide to the next world, he convinces them that he's not nuts. Eventually, another portal opens and Mallory sees it, so Remy knows that he's not crazy and Mallory finally believes him. Diana scans a high amount of quantum bullshit, and when the portal reopens, they jump through it and land on a Cro-Mag-controlled Earth. They break in, and Maggie takes some tranquilizers before they find the room that Wade is in. And she's Jan in the pan. Or Zordon, whichever reference you get. She's in a tube, but she's alive. The sliders are promptly captured, and Rembrandt explains what happens before Maggie and Quinn found him during the first episode of Season 4. He explains that the last time he saw Wade was as she was being dragged away, and he knew it was the real Wade. 
The reason that she's in the tube is because the Crow Mags are using some interdimensional bullshit to bypass the slide cage. What is the slide cage? Well, at the risk of ripping off Linkara, time for backstory. In the opening episode of Season 4 of Sliders, which was named Genesis, Quinn was revealed to have actually come from a different world than the Earth Prime that Remy, Wade, and the Professor were from. On his homeworld, the humans and cro lived in harmony. But that all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Actually, the cro started to take over, so Quinn's real parents sent him and his brother Colin to different worlds to keep them safe. Hidden. Safe. The children must be kept. Then, they were unable to retrieve them because Colin's foster parents died, and so Colin was untraceable, and Quinn's foster mother didn't want to give him up, so she lied and said that he had died. After that, Quinn's father set up a device called a slide cage that would send anyone trying to slide into their world onto a barren world where they would pose no threat to, to Chromag Prime. It was devised to keep the mags out. The Sliders visited it in Season 4 and attempted to bypass it, but couldn't. But now, the Cro-Mags can potentially bypass the Slide Cage and retake Quinn's homeworld. The device caused Wade to have interdimensional awareness, and so she was able to sense Rembrandt through the Force or something. She opens them a portal and they get to the long site, and Remy is determined to save Wade, and so the others slide out without him, which they shouldn't be able to do, but I'll get to that later. Wade takes over Remy's eyes, because she can do that now, and she, she sees what she's become. She tells Remy that she loves him and overloads the computer, stopping the Cro-Mags and opening a portal for Remy to rejoin the group. Then Rembrandt sees Wade still from the Season 3 opening credits in the lake, and she says that she'll always be with him, and the episode ends. <laughs> Well, uh, they got Sabrina Lloyd to do the voiceover for Wade. That's more than Power Rangers did to give us closure about Jason, Zack, and Trini. But that was only because Cle Clevant Derrick, who plays Rembrandt, begged Sabrina Lloyd to do it. Thank you, Clevant. You helped us get the only good point of this episode. <laughs> For one thing, they completely disregard the physics of the show. All sci-fi shows have arbitrary rules that the science in the show must follow. Star Trek has the beaming through the shields thing, and Doctor Who has the 12 regeneration limit. Those were basic rules set up by the writers back in the early days of the show, and when they break those rules, people get pissed. And in this episode, they break one of the most fundamental rules of sliding. When you slide onto a new world, you must be on that world when the timer times out, or else the gateway will not open. This was made clear in Invasion, the first episode to feature the what was supposed to be the greatest villains of the show, the Cro-Mags. The greatest villain of the show is David Peckinpah, though. And you'd think that someone would object to that that worked on the show, right? Apparently not. So when they slide out of the world at the end of the episode, that shouldn't be possible. It's just not. In Invasion, they had to go back to the New France world, where they were captured by cro and detained on a cro outpost, because the timer would not work if they weren't on New France. Also, Mallory has no idea who Wade is. Mallory is half-Queen Mallory from the first four seasons, who loved Wade. The fact that he doesn't pop out when they find her is a huge letdown. You can't. Plain and simple. The concept is so flawed that nothing, and I mean nothing, can save this episode short of not making it. I know this show is called How to Fix It, but I can't fix this episode. In fact, I could barely write this review because I just... Thinking about this episode makes me sick. It's not just that Wade is a head in a jar. It's not just the mutilation of the physics of the show. It's the entire reason this episode exists. Wade was in a breeding camp. Do you know what that means? She was, for lack of a better word to use, raped day after day. Why? 
because that's how they wrote it. Say what you want about Stephen Moffat, but he has never relegated a beloved character and previously the only female character on the show to a life of rape. David Peckinpah did. The professor was killed. I could get past that. Colin was unstuck and sent hurtling through the multiverse. I could get past that. Quinn was merged with another version of him. Fine. Wade's closure after the breeding camp is that she is a head in a jar with wires and tubes going into her brain. Why did we need this episode? Actually, I can fix this. Go back and get Wade out of the fucking breeding camp. I haven't gotten this pissed off since before Dishonor, and that was just because it ruined my favorite Star Trek series. This ruined one of my favorite characters from sci-fi, Wade Wells, one of the original Four Sliders, the one who started the journey. Rembrandt, he was an unwilling passenger. The professor was reluctant. Quinn was already a slider, and he wasn't too sure about bringing other people in. Wade convinced them both to do it. And this gets me so pissed, so fired up, because it didn't have to happen this way. Have Wade just be in another prison, or maybe she escaped and was trying to find them for season four. But no, she's not. And in this episode, that was supposed to be closure, it's just a slap in the face. No, a kick in the nuts to every fan of Sliders, every person who watched the show and liked Wade and was sad when she left. I'm sure that word that Wade was coming back for an episode was most likely amazing for fans back in the 90s. She didn't deserve this, and the fans didn't deserve this. Sliders. That was Requiem, a god-awful episode that was so disrespectful to one of the best characters on the show. If you'd like to see more of How to Fix It, you can hit the subscribe button down there. And if you'd like, you can also leave a comment in the box that's below the subscribe button. And if you like this video, show it to your friends and share it around. Anyway, I need to go walk some good sliders. See you next time. What if you found a portal to a parallel universe? What if you could slide into a thousand different worlds where it's the same year? And you're the same person, but everything else is different. And what if you can't find your way home?